Hi, and welcome to Tech Talk. I'm Ken Mingus, Executive Editor of Computer World. I'm here with Lucas Murian, also of Computer World, Senior Reporter, with Michael Simon from Macworld PC World. Good afternoon. Afternoon, morning, yes. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with uh, basically tech firms and financial services. Stick around. Okay, so Lucas, I wanted to start off with you because you were writing about this uh, in the wake of WWDC this year, mm -hmm. that uh, Apple seems to be at least edging toward uh, a situation where they could be turning iPhones into crypto wallets. Mm -hmm. And I was curious because it's obviously not something that they talked about during the uh, developers conference, but they've rolled out this, uh, what's it called, CryptoKit? CryptoKit, yeah. CryptoKit. So what, what do we think's going on there? Why do we think Apple may be moving in that direction? Well, because other phone companies have moved in that direction, namely Samsung and HTC, they've already announced that they're going to have the ability for native uh, digital wallets to exist on their phones. And uh, then, of course, Apple announced CryptoKit, which is this framework that allows developers to build into iOS applications, uh, sorry, it's with iOS 13, Right. Uh, build into iOS applications uh, all this cryptography uh, functionality like hashing and public and private keys and encryption. And that's what you need in order to create a crypto wallet and store these hashes that represent cryptocurrency. And, and the problem that people read these stories and they're like, Apple would never do yeah. that. Um, you know, it's, it's it's a Ponzi scheme. Uh, well, Bitcoin in might be, but crypto wallets are, exactly. are a real thing. That's, that's the point. This yeah. this isn't based on supply and demand like Bitcoin. Right. This is based on fiat currencies. So basically, these are tokens that represent fiat currency, which you means have, they represent real money. It's not. I'm just, sorry. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. So you have money in the bank. These tokens, let's say dollar for dollar, so, so one token represents one dollar in your bank account, yep. and these are digital tokens that can then be stored in this digital wallet, this online wallet, and in this case Which it would, would be, be an your iPhone. Phone, your iPhone, yeah. Exactly. And then you can use this to buy things or give other people money or cash it in at some point. And what's wonderful about that is there's no middleman. So you have no central bank or clearance or fees associated with that. It's your money. And the particularly interesting is that it creates this whole new marketplace for uh, developing countries, many of whom, uh, many of which do not have a good banking system. Uh, and in other countries like Venezuela, and the banks are right now. Yeah, as we not, know. You, you probably don't want to put your money don't in want to put your money. <laughs> Venezuelan bank right now. Not a good place for it. I was thinking of opening an account, too. Yeah, so I'm kind no, of you might want to wait. But uh, so they don't really have banking services. This is a banking service, and it's highly secure, and it can be used anywhere in the world. Regula the regulatory landscape right now for cryptocurrency is a wild west, and there isn't really much regulation around it right now. Yeah. So you can uh, create a wallet, and if this eventually comes to be, create a wallet on your Apple iPhone, fill it with cryptocurrency, which represents real money, and then you can... You know, buy anything cross border. You can send money home. So, like, if you're in a, if you're a, uh, a migrant worker and you want to send money home to your native country, yep. you can do that with this. Okay, and it, it's interesting that you know, as noted, <clears throat> Apple hasn't been talking about plans to do this, but you know, right. eagle-eyed you, you you figured out that they're putting the the parts in place that would allow it to do so if it chooses to at some point down the road, after yeah. after iOS 13 rolls out. Yeah, I mean, it's part of a trend. You're seeing more and more financial uh, fintech companies, uh, startups, and financial big stalwarts like J.P. Morgan Chase going down this route to create uh, uh, cryptocurrencies that they can use cross-border, uh, which saves them money. It's, it's faster, and they're really meeting a demand out there because a lot of millennials uh, see the value in cryptocurrency, not Bitcoin. So let's make right. a differentiation right. there. These are digital tokens that represent real money or goods, uh, real estate, you know, automobiles, whatever. Right. Well, what's interesting is, you know, Mike and I were talking about this earlier. This also follows from Apple's announcement earlier this year of the uh, Apple Card, which at the time I remember thinking, why do I need another credit card? But then I thought, oh, it's Apple. I have to have one now. <laughs> so I did sign up for the please send me information on the Apple Card when it's available. Uh, have you? Are you getting an Apple Card? Or uh, well, I don't use an iPhone exclusively, but my wife will probably have one. Yeah, it's it's just interesting. From, from a consumer end, it's a, yeah, go ahead. You know, it's a decent card. You get um, two percent back on Apple Pay purchases, and and there's no late fees, right? Relatively low. Wasn't there? Uh, yeah, there's no fees. Yeah, but there is an APR. 
Yeah. So you will get, you know, if you don't pay your bill, you're still going to. Well, yeah, you're you know, going to rack up some interest rates. rates. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it's most, not free. most credit cards, they charge you the whatever, 15%. And then they also say, well, here's a $25 late fee. Apple won't be charging on top of that. Yeah. But there is, um, I think the APR is 13 to 26, depending. It's. It's well, relatively you're, you're, low compared to the industry, but it's still, you know, it's still a lot. Thirteen percent is still it's, per, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, for it's, starters. It's still it's, pretty it's, high. It's, it's wow. not a bargain, that's for sure. Yeah. But um, you know, Apple has Apple had a card before. They it was an Apple Store card, and you earned iTunes points, and no one really knew about it. Yeah. And this is a real kind of push, and com, uh, uh, coupled with this, which I didn't know about because I'm on the consumer end, and Apple right. didn't talk about it. Right. It seems as though this is a Step one towards becoming a full-blown financial. Well, institution. exactly. That's and that's what that's what prompted my interest because, of course, also this week we've got Facebook announcing, uh, you know, its yeah, plans. Right. And and so uh, yeah, I just I'm just trying to figure out are all of these tech firms moving into financial services? Well, I mean, this, this is the only thing that they don't have of ours mm -hmm. is our money. <laughs> well, they'll they're going to have what we pay them. And well, healthcare. it's not just that they don't have our money, but I mean, <laughs> setting okay. up the uh, basically an entirely yeah. alternate financial system yeah. mm -hmm. that would be you know would would sort of skirt the current system. Absolutely. And, which yeah. could be good or bad, I suppose. You know, as long as it's secure, it's blockchain, it should be, you mm -hmm. know, doable. I mean, the one thing that makes the iPhone kind of uniquely qualified for this stuff is that secure enclave that they announced with, exactly. or they, they introduced with Touch ID. Right. So your fingerprint is secure. Like yeah. it's your identity, completely encrypted basically. on the device. It Apple goes doesn't nowhere. get it. Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. No, it's not sent over through encryption. It is on your device. It is secure. If someone, like, no one can get it. Did, did I mention that CryptoKit works with secure? Oh, okay, there you go. See? So yes. instead of. Bingo. Ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding. That's instead of having the input keys, you just, you, you stick your right. thumb on there or your face, and you automatically open up access to your private keys, which represent the money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me ask about F Facebook too, while we're talking about this real quick. So, do we know? I know this doesn't roll out until next year. Yeah. But yeah. what is it that Facebook is hoping to do? Basically, turn the social media site that it's been into like a retail site? Yeah, they're they're giving uh, they're offering users the capability to use cryptocurrencies. So again, once again, uh, back to cryptocurrency. Right, right. A digital yeah, it's going right there. It's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, digital currency to make purchases on Facebook or other sites. They said it will be. Be interoperable with uh, with other uh, blockchain one would assume, exchanges. One would assume they'd probably try to find some hooks into Amazon. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, I, I think what's interesting, what's most interesting about this is they're also seeing a, a expanded market in developing countries. So countries with very weak banking systems, they see a market open for new users. So uh, enlarged user base to make purchases using this cryptocurrency instead of having to use a credit card or a bank account for that. Okay. On the, uh, and some are speculating that this also means increased um, advertising. So let's say you go from Facebook to make a purchase uh, for a product, those ads will then be placed on the site where you're making that purchase. Okay. So, Got it. Oh, I see. Yeah. So yeah. it's a way of targeting advertising as well. Exactly. That makes more sense to me, you know, in terms of Facebook than perhaps you know an alternate currency. Right. And people are they're a little bit wary. Uh, Facebook doesn't have the greatest reputation these days you for don't securing say personal information. <laughs> well, you know, I'm as, as we're talking, I'm thinking, too, this reminds me of, like, there was a Black Mirror episode that I watched a few years back where your popularity on social media uh, governed, you know, your value to society. And right. the more popular you were on social media, the more, I don't know. Wait, wait that, that's not how it works? No. That, <laughs> sadly, I don't think it works. I, I've tried that. It doesn't work that way. No. But it's, I mean, I do wonder, you know, and maybe I'm being a bit of a Luddite here, but I do wonder with this rush toward cryptocurrency, crypto wallets, um, you know, and with tech firms moving into financial services, you know, what kinds of issues might come up that we haven't seen yet? I mean, it's, it, yes, it's good that there's no central regulator and you can avoid fees and things like that, but then there's no central regulator. So right. it's like, you know, do you really want to trust Facebook with your money. <laughs> it's like, why wouldn't what you could trust possibly Facebook with your personal information? You know, I mean, just, now, no. I know, now they did say that they, it's going to be yeah. completely separate from the social media. Stuff. Right up front, they said, look, we are not going to have access. We, our company will not have access to your financial information. That is going to be separate. They created a separate company and a, uh, a, a, um, uh, an association made right. up by right now uh, more than a couple dozen different companies, like Visa, and, Visa yeah, and eBay, and yeah, yeah. Uh, various pro processors and, and fintech companies and financial services firms that will be in charge of governing this blockchain. So it's going to be 
a probably a hybrid blockchain. They didn't get specific about that, but you're going to have a private blockchain that's going to handle the onboarding of uh, new users. So if I want to use this service, I'm going to have to first verify I am who I am using my driver's license or some other form of ID. And then I'm going to have to say, and this is where I do my banking. This is where you're going to be able to fill my wallet. With, uh, or empty uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in that, in that case. But uh, so once you're onboarded, now you go on to a public blockchain where you can use that blockchain to then spend this cryptocurrency. I can understand now, you know, you've written a lot about blockchain over the last few years, and we've seen lots of uh, hype that blockchain is going to reorder how everything is done. I can certainly see building blocks here for how certainly financial services could be uh, disrupted in a lot of ways yeah. by a lot of these companies. Hugely. And I, what I'm wondering, I'm going to be writing about, as you know, today I'm going to be also looking further into that, how this is going to affect the financial services industry. Um, are more going to be jumping on board? Yes, absolutely. I think you're going to see more and more uh, financial services companies, banks, processors uh, jumping into the blockchain um, marketplace. I mean, they don't have a choice yeah. because other people are going to start to eat their lunch. It's like healthcare. You know, you right. have all these other... Uh, you know, Amazon and Google and other companies that have never traditionally been in healthcare. And Apple, yeah. And Apple that are now getting into uh, Apple, especially that are now getting into healthcare. They're they're eating their traditional industry's lunch. Okay. But doesn't so maybe I'm misunderstanding it. But doesn't so Facebook needs Citibank or wh- citizens or whoever to, to verify kind of who work you with are. Them. To verify that you have the funds. Right. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. But but. They're not going to charge fees for that. I'm going to charge fees for my for, for verifying funds that I have. There's going to be. They did say there is going to be a small fee. I'm sorry, I yeah. shouldn't say that. Yeah. There will be a small fee, but it's not going to be anything compared to what we pay today for traditional banking. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So coming to a, a, a social media site or an iPhone or some other tech device near yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, you know, financial services. People like us. We're wary of trusting Facebook, mm-hmm. but you know, there was a time when people didn't trust Chase. Yeah. Or, you know, as you get bigger and you become more involved, you know, you become more a part of the society in the lexicon. Mm-hmm. Facebook, oh, yeah, sure, I'll give Google my money. I'll give Facebook my money. Are you sure? Or Amazon. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're household names. They're big companies. And there's a certain trust fund. You know, <laughs> we're very U.S.-centric mm-hmm. where, you know, these headlines, these Facebook headlines and the election and all that stuff. Yep. There's other parts of the world that is, that's not as big Absolutely. of a story. Yeah. Well, and that's the point you're making is that this is really geared globally yeah. toward you know economies and parts of the world where financial services are not as readily available as they are here. I expect right. heavy marketing in those third yeah. world countries and the developing countries. It's um, a global play, basically. A- absolutely. Yeah. And it will probably spread out from there. So you're probably going to see it in, in those regions, and then it will it'll slowly... Uh, increase in popularity as it's proven out. You know, this is still a very nascent marketplace, this blockchain marketplace, and we're going to have to find where things settle. And uh, from the experts that I've talked to, some of them are saying this could be a decade away, that it's really mainstream, it could be two decades away, but this is a huge step right here. Someone like Facebook coming into this. I just have this horror scenario of my mom calling me and she's bought something on Facebook using Bitcoin or God knows what, and (laughs) I'm trying to figure out what happened, you know? (laughs) I mean, you know, Facebook made its bones by being ahead of being being first. You know, they were the first big giant social network. Yep. And, you know, why not? Yeah. Make an investment. They got enough money. Right. You know, if it doesn't pan out, it doesn't pan out. But, you know, I don't I don't Something tells me that they probably have sussed this out enough to know or to at least feel like it's going to pan out. Yeah, on way. some level. It might yeah, not yeah. be. We not, not I might, we might not all be using it in five years. But, yeah, it's definitely there. It's definitely a, a real mean, thing. The guy in charge of this effort was a former president of PayPal. Yeah, I mean, these, they have, they know they what have they're done about. their research on this. He, they've been working on this for, from what I understand, over a year now. So they have done their homework, um, their due diligence. Uh, they'll probably roll it out slowly and uh, see how it works, see how well it's adopted. Mm-hmm. But this is a big step. Okay. So, well, I mean, just think about where we are. You've got uh, the Apple Card comes out this year. You've got Apple putting the, the, the pieces in place to prote- perhaps turn your iPhone into a, a crypto wallet. Mm-hmm. And Facebook planning on 2020 for its, uh, you know, cryptocurrency. So, uh times are changing. So, you won't need a wallet in a couple of years. Exactly. <laughs> Any last thoughts before I let you guys go? I'm, I think we pretty much honestly it, no. I'm look. I'm as skeptical about this <laughs> stuff as anyone. You're a reporter. I, you're supposed I, to be. You know, and I try to keep that that you know level of skepticism in every story I write. But I, I, it's hard for me not to say these are exciting times. Yeah, they are. It is. It's, it's, it's really remarkable. That's why we're talking about it. Yeah. Okay, uh, Michael. Thanks for being here. Lucas. Thanks for being here. 
For now, that's a crypto wallet wrap. Thanks. <laughs>